Hello there. Welcome to this lecture on Chemical Engineering Economics, Part 3, Present Value, Future Value, Annuities, and Their Conversions. I want to make a note at the beginning of this lecture, before you begin to worry that this video is really long, know that I'm basically cramming six weeks of engineering economics that I was taught in undergrad to you in this short video. You might need to watch this video more than once if you don't get it the first time. The professor that taught me this information 21 years ago uh, spent six to eight weeks on this information that I'm going to try to convey to you as efficiently as I can. Okay, so we are going to start with three important economics definitions. The first one is called annuity. An annuity is a series of equal consecutive cash flows over some time period. So I've drawn here the cash flow diagram from the previous lecture, which is the home purchase and sale cash flow diagram. You might remember it. You are making a down payment of $20,000 at time zero, and then you are making 180 monthly payments of $1,000 each and then selling the home for $250,000. So the annuity in this situation is $1,000. It's 180 equal cash flows that are consecutive. And so we would say A equals negative 1,000. Some examples of annuities include paying a mortgage payment, winning the lottery and getting $400,000 a year for 25 years, making a monthly car payment. These are typical examples of annuities. We'll next look at future value. Uh, future value is some amount of money at a future time. So if we look at our cash flow diagram, the $250,000 that we earned from selling our home is a future value. It is some cash flow in the future or some cash flow further down on the cash flow diagram. And it is not a series of cash flows like the annuity. It is a singular value. Some examples of future values include selling a house 15 years from now for $250,000, or maybe paying a mileage penalty for a leased vehicle after three years of driving that vehicle. The last economics definition that we have to cover is present value. It is some amount of money at time zero or before a future value. We will do plenty of examples with present values so that you'll get comfortable with them. But in this example with the mortgage and the home purchase and sale, the $20,000 down payment represents a present value. And notice again that like future values, present values are not a series of cash flows. They are not an annuity. It is a singular value at some point in time. Some examples of present values could include purchasing fixed capital investment for an acetone plant, so purchasing all of the equipment which is necessary for building an acetone plant, or opening a checking account with $3,000. These are all purchases that have to be made at some time at the beginning of a process, at the beginning of opening an account, or at the beginning of building a plant, for example, so that is why they're called present value. Did you know? We can calculate the value of money in the past or in the future by converting present values, future values, and annuities using an interest rate. These are the formulas that we can use to convert from future values to present values, present values to future values, future values to annuities, and everything in between, all permutations of these three. We will be using these equations extensively in this video lecture. Which chapter in the Turton textbook has these wonderful equations and discusses the conversion between future value, present value, and annuities? It is the engineering economic analysis chapter. Let's do a lot of examples. This is the first one. We are going to draw a cash flow diagram representing your money market account. 
So you've just invested $3,000 in a money market account that earns 2% interest compounded monthly. That sounds like APR to me. 2% interest compounded monthly, that's APR. Assuming you withdraw the whole value, what is the account worth in 30 years? So I'm going to ask you some important questions at the start of all of these problems. There are really only two questions you have to answer. The first question is, with the cash flow that you were given in the problem, 3000 is that a present value, a future value, or an annuity? And then are you solving for present value, future value, or annuity? If you said that the $3,000 represents a present value, that is correct. $3,000 is being invested now, and you are solving for a future value. In other words, the value in 30 years. So we are doing a present value to future value conversion. Let's look at the cash flow diagram next, and I'm going to draw this two different ways. I'm going to draw a cash flow diagram based on months and a cash flow diagram based on years. So you can see that the monthly cash flow diagram goes up to 360 months. The $3,000 is a present value, and the future value is the value of the account when the money is withdrawn at the end of 360 months. For the yearly cash flow diagram, it's the same thing except that the unit of time is years and we go up to 30 years. So both of these are perfectly fine to uh, use for this calculation. You can use either one, you can use both, they're going to result in the same value. So we're going to remember now that the interest that you're earning monthly is not explicitly shown on a cash flow diagram. I mentioned this maybe about two or three times in the previous uh, lecture. Remember that the interest that you're earning into this account is not explicitly shown. So this is the characteristic equation for a present value to future value conversion. This is the biggest mistake people make in engineering economics calculations. They do not use the correct interest rate. So the interest rate here, you have to pay attention, is the monthly interest rate, and that is reflective of n, which is the number of months. So the interest rate is based on the time period. You cannot use a monthly interest rate if n is in terms of years. You cannot use a yearly interest rate if the n is in terms of months. This doesn't make sense. So your interest rates must always match the n. So in contrast here with the yearly cash flow diagram, we have to perform a conversion of APR to APY because we have to use a yearly interest rate for this problem. And so our conversion of 2% APR to APY gives us 2.018%. So I input that percentage into the present value to future value formula, and the N is number of years, 30. Notice that the interest rate is in terms of years, it's an APY, and that is because N is the number of years. The interest rate is reflective of the time period. You can check my work. The answer is the same either way, $5,464, not too bad. But at the same time, you're probably not earning as much as you should for $3,000 invested for that long. Let's do another example. We're going to draw the cash flow diagram representing your investment account this time. So assuming that the Dow Jones has increased an average of 8% per year, this is an APR, compounded monthly uh, interest rate, for the past 40 years. If someone has $1 million in their stock portfolio today and withdrew it completely, how much money did they invest in the Dow Jones Index Fund 22 years ago when they opened the investment account? So as with all problems, we're going to determine is the dollar value that we are given a P, an F, or an A, present value, future value, or annuity? Are you solving for present value, future value, or annuity?
This problem confuses some people because they assume that the problem says $1 million today, and so they assume that that means that it's a present value. The $1 million is a future value because we're going back in time to solve for the present value. How much did that person invest in the index fund 22 years ago? So that is a present value. So this problem is a future value to present value conversion. So I've drawn two cash flow diagrams again, one in terms of months and one in terms of years. So in terms of months, 22 years is 264 months. You can draw a cash flow diagram in terms of years as well. So 22 is the number of years, but the downward arrow represents the $1 million that's being withdrawn at month 264 or year 22. Present value is at time zero. So notice that numbers in the millions can be designated with an M, numbers in the billions can be designated with a B, numbers in the trillions can be designated with a T. You can use this so you don't have so many zeros on a cash flow diagram. This is the characteristic equation for a future value to present value conversion, and we can apply this to both the monthly and yearly cash flow diagram. So for the monthly, I am using a monthly interest rate, 0 0.08 divided by 12, because n is the number of months. The interest rate must be reflective of the n, which is in months. For the yearly cash flow diagram, we must do a conversion to APY because we do not have an annual interest rate. 0 0.08 is in APR and needs to be converted to APY. So I converted it to APY and then I input it into the equation. And notice that N is in terms of years and that is why we're using a yearly interest rate. Either way, the answer is the same, $173,000. Not too bad. Not too bad for 22 years. If you invest, theoretically, if you invest that much money 22 years later, you should have $1 million. But of course, the assumption is that the Dow Jones is increasing at an average of 8% per year consistently. And that's possibly not a great assumption. Let's do another example. We're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison for this one. We're going to draw two cash flow diagrams representing two different accounts. So let's say you are smart, you invest $500 per month in the stock market from age 22 to age 65 because you're a chemical engineer and you start working at age 22. I decide to devote my life to teaching students about cash flow diagrams and present values, future values, and annuities. So I go to grad school. That means that I invest $800 a month in the stock market from age 28 to age 65 because I don't have a real job until age 28. Who has more money at age 65? We're going to assume that APR of 8% as from the previous example. Are $500 and $800 a present value, a future value, or annuity? And are you solving for present value, future value, or annuity? You should have probably guessed that $500, since they are equal sums of consecutive cash flows, those represent the $500 and $800 represent an annuity. And then you are solving for future value because hopefully age 65, of course, is in the future compared to age 28 or age 22. Um, and hopefully it's still in our future as well. Your investment account cash flow diagram should look like this. The units are in months. Because you're putting $500 a month into an account every month for 516 months. And then you are solving for F. For my investment account, my cash flow diagram is also in months. However, there are fewer months, 444, but it looks similar. I'm just inputting more money per month, $800. So we are doing an A to F conversion here. Where did I get 516 and 444? Age 22 to age 65 represents 516 months. Age 28 to 65 represents 444 months. So I am investing more money over a shorter period of time compared to you. Note also that monthly payments are usually made at the end of the month. 
which is why there's no cash flow at time zero. Any of you who have financed a car, uh, have made loan payments, you make these payments at the end of every month. You do not make the, the payments, you do not pay these bills at the beginning of the month. You make these payments at the end of the month. That is why there's nothing there at time zero. It's important to understand that. So this is the characteristic equation for an annuity to future value conversion. Notice that I'm using a monthly interest rate 0 0.08 divided by 12 because the N is in terms of months. The only difference is the annuity value as well as the N in these equations. If you do the math, you will have $2.23 million at age 65. I will have $2.17 million at age 65. So you will be ahead of me because you started investing early. However, I would argue that both of us are in pretty good shape considering that we will have two point some million dollars at age 65. That's not too bad. Let's draw a cash flow diagram representing your money market account for this example. You think your car will most likely break down in about two years. How much money should you be saving per month to buy a $7,000 used car two years from now? Assume your money market account is earning 2.018 APY. Is $7,000 a present value, future value, or annuity? Are you solving for P, F, or A? If you said that $7,000 is a future value because you're going to be withdrawing it two years from now, that is correct. You are solving for an annuity because you are trying to determine how much money you need to be saving per month to buy this vehicle. So the cash flow diagram for your money market account is in terms of months. And so it's 24 months and you have equal consecutive cash flows which represent the annuity, $7,000 is being withdrawn at the end of 24 months. Notice we have to convert the annual interest rate into a monthly interest rate because N is in terms of months. We have 24 months. We cannot use years here because your annuity is a monthly annuity. It's not a yearly annuity. So N is in terms of months. Therefore, the interest rate must be in terms of months. So we're going to do an APY to APR conversion. This is the equation which allows you to convert between those two. I've inputted here 0 0.02018, that is the APY. 1 over 12 is 0 0.08333, and we get 2% APR. But we have to remember that APR does not have any meaning by itself. It is not the monthly interest rate. APR really doesn't mean anything by itself. It is not the monthly interest rate. We must input the monthly interest rate. This is the characteristic equation for a future value to annuity conversion. So notice that I have inputted here a monthly interest rate. 0 0.02 divided by 12 is the monthly interest rate. N is 24. It's the number of months. You need to be saving $286 a month to have $7,000 at the end of 24 months. I love going through this example because it's very important that you check the work of an auto dealership. It's very important that you don't trust that what they're telling you you owe every month on a finance vehicle is correct. You need to check their work and make sure that they're not overcharging you. So let's draw a cash flow diagram representing your checking account. Let's say you've just purchased a Subaru WRX for $26,000 and you'll be financing it for 4.5 APR over four years. How much will you pay each month? Is $26,000 a present value, future value, or an annuity? And are you solving for P, F, or A?
26,000 represents a present value because this is money that needs to be paid immediately in order for you to receive the vehicle. And you are solving for an annuity because you are solving for what your monthly payment is going to be for four years. Let's look at the cash flow diagram for your checking account. This is going to be in terms of months because you are making 48 payments. So 48 payments once a month for four years. And the A is a downward arrow because it is leaving your account. 26,000 represents a present value. Notice that your car payment is due at the end of the first month. Any of you who have financed a vehicle know this. Note also that 26,000 is not shown as an upward arrow in this cash flow diagram because it's not entering your account. I'm going to explain from a different standpoint why this is not an upward arrow. $26,000 never enters your checking account, only money leaving. There's only money leaving your checking account. $26,000 never touches your checking account. Let's do a cash flow diagram comparison so you understand what I mean by this. This is what your checking account looks like compared to Subaru Credit's account. So Subaru Credit has the job of paying for your vehicle. They must write a check for $26,000. This is why this is a downward arrow. For their account, they will be receiving from you some annuity every month for 48 months, and we are going to solve for that annuity. This is the characteristic equation for a present value to annuity conversion. Remember, this is a monthly payment that you're making. The N is 48, so the interest rate must be reflective of the N. And so I've inputted here 0.45 divided by 12 as the interest rate throughout this equation. And you get $562.89 a month, about $600 a month. This is a lot of money, even for a relatively cheap new car. There's so many new cars that are 40,000 or more. This is a relatively cheap new car. It's still a lot of money. Maybe go back to that idea of buying that $7,000 used car. Okay, we're finally, finally going to do a chemical engineering example. Even though all of these other examples were very useful, this is finally a chemical engineering example. We are going to draw a cash flow diagram representing the company's account. So we are going to build a phthalic and hydride plant. And it is expected to earn $30 million in revenue per year for 10 years. You might wonder what revenue is. Revenue represents money coming in from the sale of phthalic and hydride. It does not represent profit. Revenue is just money coming in from the sale of your chemical, phthalic and hydride. That is what revenue is. How much is all of that money worth? as one lump sum right now. So if we're expecting to earn $30 million a year for 10 years, how much is all of that money worth right now as one lump sum? We're going to assume 8% compounded monthly. So is 30 million a present value, future value, or an annuity? Are you solving for P, F, or A? The $30 million a year is an annuity. Um, the per year really gives it away. You're solving for present value because the question is asking how much is all of that money worth as one lump sum right now? Not in the future, but right now. Let's draw the cash flow diagram of the company's account. This is going to be in terms of years, specifically 10 years. So we have an annuity that we are then transforming into present value. Notice also we were given an APR, which means we need to convert to APY because our cash flow diagram is in terms of years. Our N is 10, so we must convert from APR to APY. This is because the unit of time is years, so our APY is 0 0.082999. Also note, we did not make $30 million at time zero. These cash flows occur at the end of every year, not at time zero. 
This is the characteristic equation for an annuity to present value conversion. Notice that I'm using a yearly interest rate because n is the number of years, n is 10. And this gives us a value of $199 million. This Example is a little confusing for most students, so I'd like to present a couple of different ways of thinking about the previous example. The first way of thinking about it is that if you had $199 million in an account right now earning 8.3% interest per year, you could withdraw $30 million a year every year for 10 years, and after the 10th withdrawal, there would be no money left in the account. That's one way of thinking about it. Maybe a more concrete way of thinking about it is that if you wanted to lend someone $199 million right now at 8.3% annual interest, they should pay you $30 million a year every year for 10 years. These would be wonderful problems to have. Wonderful. So getting back to our example, one more note that I want to make. When annuities are converted to present value, the present value is not at the first cash flow value. It is not at year one, but it's at the year before it. Notice that. This is probably the second biggest mistake that students make besides not matching their interest rate and their N properly. This is probably the second biggest mistake that students make in engineering economics calculations. When you convert an annuity to present value, the present value is not at year one, as in this example, it's at the year before it, which is zero. So I just want to make this extremely clear. $30 million a year every year for 10 years is equivalent to $199 million at time zero, not at year one, at year zero. So just to drive this idea home, I just want to emphasize that the A to P conversion sends the annuity to the previous time period. But if you recall the example where we were investing $500 a month, for 516 months. This sent the future value to 516 months, not to 515, not to 517, but 516. So when we perform an A to P value, it sends it to uh, one time period before. When we do an A to F conversion, we have the, the F at the last cash flow value. So look at this slide until that makes sense. It's slightly different when we're doing an A to P or an A to F conversion, simply in terms of where that money ends up. Okay, let's do another example with two accounts. Both you and I start investing at age 28 because let's say both of us start making money late in life or later in life. You invest, two, you invest $500 a month from age 28 to age 71. I invest $800 a month from age 28 to age 65. But I do not put any money in my investment account from age 65 to 71. I stop working. I just decide to not put any money into my investment account from age 65 to age 71. Let's assume an interest rate of 8% compounded monthly. Who has more money? Do I have more money at age 65 or you at age 71? Who has more money at age 71, you or me? So we're going to do a two-part problem. We're going to figure out who has more money, me at 65 or you at 71, and then we'll look at who has more money at age 71. So are $500 and $800 a present value, future value, or an annuity? And are you solving for a P, F, or A? Because $500 and $800 are consecutive cash flows, this is a hint that you have an annuity there. And of course, you're solving for a future value. You're solving for how much that money will be worth some, at some point or some age in the future. So let's look at the cash flow diagram for your investment account. This one is a little less complicated. So it's 516 months equal cash flows for all those months of $500 a month, and you're trying to determine the future value. My investment account cash flow diagram is a little more complicated because 
I invest for 444 months and then I stop investing. And then we need to figure out the future value at 444 and then eventually at 516. And you may be wondering where the 516 and 444 came from. Age 28 to 71 represents 516 months. Age 28 to 65 represents 444 months. So these are the characteristic equations for an A to F conversion. Notice that we are using a monthly interest rate because N is in terms of months, either 516 or 444. So you will have $2.23 million at age 71. I will have $2.17 million at age 65. This is very, very similar to the example that we had done before, so it's good to practice this. But the next question is who will have more money at age 71? So 2.17 million is what I have at age 65 not at age 71, so we need to do a transformation. So I'm going to redraw this cash flow diagram for my investment account, and this is at month 444, you'll notice a huge upward arrow, this is the value of the account. So now we need to perform a present value to future value conversion because we have a value at month 444, and we need to move that to month 516. Also note present values don't always have to start at time zero. You can see here that this is not at time zero, it's at month 444. It's just an idea or a concept which allows us to determine is this cash flow before or after another cash flow. So let's do this conversion. We do a P to F conversion. We're using a monthly interest rate because the number of months is 72. That is our N. 516 minus 444 is 72. And we get 3.5 million. So what I've learned from this is that investing large sums of money early pays off. If you're going to invest a large sum of money, better do it at age 28 than at age 65. Okay, so now we're going to do finally a more realistic, complex cash flow diagram for building a phthalic and hydride plant. And I'm going to present you with a lot of information on this slide here. So let's say from the first two videos, we've calculated our grassroots cost is $70 million. Let's say that our plant needs some money called working capital to put up front for the first year because we're building the plant and we're not selling products. So we need to keep the lights on. We need to keep our salaries coming and we need to keep employing people, um, but we are not making any products. So we need some money to kind of fill that gap. And that is 20% of the FCI, that is working capital. Our cost of manufacturing from our calculation was $4 million for nine years, starting with the second year. Our revenue was $20 million for nine years, starting with the second year. Revenue, remember, is the amount that we expect that we will be able to sell our phthalic anhydride for on the market. And I've calculated that to be $20 million a year. Salvage value at the end of 10 years. This is how much your equipment is worth at the end of this process. And this is what you would be able to recover in terms of the value of your equipment. That is half a million dollars. And we're going to assume an interest rate of 8% compounded monthly. So we are going to consolidate all of these cash flows to time zero to calculate net present value. We are going to take all of this disparate information and consolidate it to one arrow at one point in time, and that is time zero. That is called net present value. Very, very, very important engineering economic metric. The next thing we need to do is we need to determine whether these values, whether it's $70 million, the working capital, cost of manufacturing, are these P, F, or A values. So for example, the grassroots cost, this is the fixed capital investment. This must be paid at time zero. That is why it is a present value. The working capital is also a present value. It also needs to be paid at time zero. You cannot pay for these things 10 years from now, 20 years from now. You must pay for them upfront at time zero. The cost of manufacturing, $4 million for nine years, starting with the second year, that sounds like an annuity to me, definitely. 
And the revenue sounds like an annuity to me as well because it is $20 million being paid to us for nine years starting with the second year. Salvage value at the end of 10 years, this is the value of our equipment at the end of 10 years that we will be able to sell it for, that sounds like a future value to me. Lastly, we have to consolidate all these cash flows to time zero to calculate net present value. Obviously, that means that we are converting all of these cash flows to a present value. Some of these, like grassroots cost and working capital, we don't have to do anything with. I have summarized all the information that I just presented to you at the top here, so I'm going to draw the company's cash flow diagram. This is in terms of years, specifically 10 years. So we should expect $20 million in revenue every year for nine years, $4 million cost of manufacturing, and our fixed capital investment is $70 million. Then we have working capital, which is 20% of that, so it's an additional cost. Then we have our salvage value at the end of 10 years. So note something important. It's okay to put some labeling like FCI, revenue, cost of manufacturing, salvage value. It's okay to label a diagram like this because otherwise you don't really know what all of these annuities and future values and present values are. So I'm just going to simplify the cash flow diagram to make our calculation easier. So you can consolidate the annuity. So 20 minus 4 is 16. So 16 million is the revenue minus the cost of manufacturing. So something to note here, this is really, really important. If we perform a $16 million A to P conversion, the present value will be at year one not at year zero. When you perform an annuity to present value conversion, the present value is at the time period that is before the first cash flow. So this is why the present value will be at year one and not at year zero. This means that we then have to perform a future value to present value conversion to move that cash flow from year one to year zero because we're trying to consolidate all of these cash flows to year zero. So roughly our equation is going to look a little bit like this is a sort of a shorthand representation of what we will be uh, calculating here in a moment. So we have $84 million as a huge downward arrow. This is the working capital and fixed capital investment. Then we need to move $16 million from an annuity to a present value, then a future value to present value to move it all the way to time zero. Then we have half a million dollars as our salvage value at year 10. That is a future value to present value conversion. So just to break it down a little bit more, I, I put here the conversion for the $16 million. So $16 million, we first do an A to P conversion, that's the first part of this equation. Then we perform an F to P conversion. Notice that the N is nine because the number of cash flows is nine. Notice, this is very, very important and a huge mistake most people make. N is not 10 minus two, N is nine. N is nine because there are nine cash flows. You can count them, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That is nine cash flows. Notice here that for the F to P conversion, N is one because we are moving this cash from year one to year zero. Summing all of these, the net present value is negative 84. This is our fixed capital investment and in working capital. Then we have that $16 million annuity to present value, future value to present value conversion, plus we have the salvage value, future value to present value conversion. If you sum all of these values, you get $7.36 million. Note that the positive net present value represents a process that's profitable, but look at that number carefully. It's actually not that much money, 
especially considering that we are shelling out $84 million right now at time zero. We are going to get $7.36 million overall for this process. So I would not invest in this process. It is profitable technically, but not that profitable. A note about net present value because it's so important just to emphasize this, a positive net present value tells us the process is profitable. A negative net present value tells us we will lose money. Ne negative net present value is a very bad sign. We can use net present value to compare numerous projects and determine which one is most profitable. I'm going to show you an example of that right now. We're going to draw a cash flow diagram representing uh, the company account for building an acetone plant. So let's say we are considering building either a phthalic anhydride plant or an acetone plant. For the acetone plant, I've laid everything out in Aspen. I've determined that the uh, grassroots cost is $100 million. The working capital is still 20% of the FCI. The cost of manufacturing is $3 million for 14 years, starting with the second year. Revenue is $15 million for 14 years starting with the second year, and the salvage value at the end of 10 years is zero this time. Uh, there will be no equipment that's salvaged. Interest rate is 8% compounded monthly. How on earth could we ever compare this project with the phthalic anhydride project unless we compared their net present values or some other metric that put them on equal footing? So we are going to take all of this information, consolidate all of it, and determine the net present value. I've summarized all the information at the top here. The company account is in terms of years, specifically 15 years. We're um, collecting revenue for 14 years, starting with the second year. We're solving for present value. Our cost of manufacturing is $3 million. Fixed capital investment is 100. Working capital is 20. So I'm just moving the cash flow diagram over here. And this calculation is a little less complicated, but very, very similar. You can check my work with this. So 14 is the number of cash flows that we are receiving. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That represents 14 cash flows. It is not 15 minus 2. Notice that. And we are then moving the... Uh, that value, which will be a future value to the present by uh, taking it from year one to year zero, that's where the last part of that equation is. If you sum all of these, you get negative $30.2 million. This acetone process is not profitable. This was an illustration of why we calculate net present value and why it is one of the most important, if not the most important calculation that you perform as a chemical engineer when you are assessing profitability. So everything that you have done to this point in this video lecture led you to learning to calculate NPV. So I feel that it was completely worth it and I thank you for watching this video lecture.